Hey guys, how's it going? This is Austin Dennis. It's been a long time since I've made a video on here, so I want to just kind of give an update of what's been going on, why there haven't been any more Try Hack Me walkthroughs lately, and just what I've been up to. So, the reason I haven't been doing Try Hack Me much lately is because I recently enrolled at Western Governors University to go for my Bachelor's of Science in Cybersecurity and Information Assurance. And the reason I'm making this video today is just to tell you about an interesting experience I had yesterday taking my Network Plus exam. So I did pass the exam. I passed with a score of 756 out of 720. And I felt pretty good about it. But leading up to the exam, and actually during the exam, there were a little bit of funny stories that happened. So with you know enrolling in college and everything with that i recently moved into a new house which has been another reason that i haven't been able to do anything on youtube i'm in the middle of a cross-state move and just this past weekend i moved into a new house and you know when you move into a new place you sometimes you know have to get used to certain things and you don't realize certain things until after you experience them you know you can only learn so much when you're going through a tour of the house, when you're, you know, going to enter into contract on a real estate transaction, you don't really get to know the house until you're actually living in it. Well, one thing that I noticed about this house is that we've got an enclosed porch in the front yard. And I went because I was looking for a place to put my dog when I took the exam. And I wanted to see if the front porch would be an area that I could leave the dog so that he wouldn't be making too much noise. And when I went out there to check, I shut the front door of the house behind me and realized that I locked myself out of the house. And I didn't have a key to get back in. I went around back to see if I left the back door unlocked and I didn't have that. And so I literally was going to, I was faced with the decision. Do I go to a next door neighbor, call my wife, maybe she would be able to drive home because she was a little bit further away. And I just decided I've got no other options. So in order to take my exam yesterday, I literally had to run my shoulder down and ram through my front door. And it took a few attempts, but I was eventually able to bust the door down off the hinges to get in to take the exam. So if that doesn't tell you that I'm serious, I don't really know what will. So anyways, I bust the door down. I get back upstairs. I take my exam and I end up getting through and one of the things that's a best practice to do when you're taking a CompTIA exam is you start out with all the performance questions and so I skipped through the performance questions and was going to come back and visit them after I answered all the multiple choice I don't really know what the science behind that is but it's just been proven that you score higher when you do that so I skipped those came back to them later and there was something weird going on so you have an hour and 30 minutes to take the exam. I took the exam and I finished all the multiple choice probably about an hour in, leaving myself 30 minutes that I just had to answer uh, three performance-based questions, which obviously take longer than a standard multiple choice question. Well, I go to the first question and I was having an issue with my browser where I couldn't even see the full question in the exam. So I was trying to scroll down and basically see the bottom half of the question, which was essential to answering the question, and I couldn't do it. So I just guessed the best that I could on what information I had. Uh, I tried to talk to the proctor through the chat, but the chat feature stopped working. I couldn't even send messages. So I could click on something that would prompt them that I'd raised my hand and asked for support. They restarted my exam for me one time. I tried to go back to it and I tried to scroll down again, uh, but I wasn't able to. And so then I kind of thought to myself, well, maybe I wasn't supposed to see that part of it. You know, maybe there was, you know, just something that I didn't need information there and I just figured that there should be information there. So I go to the second performance based question. I'm able to answer that and I did fine on that one, I think. And then I go to the third one and the third one, it was the same type of thing. But this time I knew for sure that I was right and that there was an issue that I couldn't scroll down on. And so I, you know, did what I could in the top half, probably the top like 80% of the question. And then when I got to the bottom portion of the question, I, you know, put in what I could, but then the other part for the drop down selector, I literally couldn't even get to it on the screen. And so it's funny because these exams, when you take them from home, they're so strict on like, there can't be any noise outside of the room. They could shut down your exam. 
you know, they don't allow you to read questions out loud. I'm assuming just because they don't want you to be able to read the questions out loud with some voice recorder that's hidden in the room and then type them out and share them somewhere. I mean, that makes sense to me. But, you know, for the last 10 minutes of the exam, I literally stared straight into the camera like I am now of the, you know, person or the proctor that should have been watching me and just said over and over and over again, there is an issue with my test. I cannot answer these remaining questions. I have 10 minutes or my test will expire. And so I tried to get them to listen to me, do whatever, and f literally for 10 minutes straight. And there were a couple times that they uh, reached out to me on the chat. They wouldn't do it. You know, they, they were telling me that they would get me in touch with their technical support team after a while. But it got to the point where my exam had expired and there was no more time left in it. And I didn't really know whether they would even be able to restart the exam or anything like that if that was something because I figured that could be more on CompTIA's end rather than Pearson View. So I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna wait, you know, because I had been waiting for technical support for probably somewhere between like five to 10 minutes at that point. And I figured the, the screen said that my time was expired, so I was just gonna see what my score was anyways. So I went back through it fully expecting to fail because the performance ones are the heaviest weighted questions. And I only was able to answer one of the three of them with all the information that I had available to me. So I was fully expecting to fail. And then I got to the final screen and it said that I passed with a score of 756 out of 720 necessary points. And so I think I must have really done well on the multiple choice if I wasn't able to even do the performance based questions which would obviously be the heaviest weight. So, you know, my advice for somebody that's taking the Network Plus exam, a lot of people, you know, are getting questions all the time about what you should do for the Network Plus exam, how should you study for it, what advice would you give to somebody. For any certification exam when it comes to IT, I recommend finding some kind of video series to follow along with, answer as many practice questions as you can to feel comfortable with it. But for this one specifically, Network Plus, there's five different objectives. Uh, I don't even know what they are off the top of my head, but I know that the first one is basically about, um, f you know, just understanding basic network devices and uh, protocols and things like that. The second one is about implementation. I can't tell you what the third one is off the top of my head. The fourth one is more about security, and the fifth one is more about troubleshooting. Now, the thing is, the very first thing that you should learn when it comes to the Network Plus exam is the OSI model. The OSI model is basically what you're going to be doing the entire exam through. And I think that's one of the mistakes that people make. And the other thing is, when it comes to the troubleshooting end of things, CompTIA has a very specific troubleshooting guide. And so the Network Plus exam, when it comes to all the other things, like for example, network implementation, well, the thing is, you don't really need to study that deep, in my opinion, when it comes to the actual network implementation stuff. You need to learn the devices and you need to learn the capabilities of what they do. You need to learn the capabilities of the cables, the maximum links that they can go, the capabilities of certain systems, switches, routers, hubs, etc., and then figure out how they work. And when you're thinking about these things, when you're thinking about a router, you're thinking about a multi-layer switch, you're thinking about a switch, uh, protocols, application layer protocols, you know, TCP, UDP, port numbers, whatever. Think about these things through the OSI model and think about troubleshooting things through CompTIA's troubleshooting model. And when you do these things and you read each question slowly, you're really gonna be able to succeed on the multiple choice thing. I truly believe that someone can pass the Network Plus exam if they just truly understand network devices, their capabilities, which level of the OSI model they operate on, uh, the capabilities of certain cables, understanding wireless protocols and things like that. It can be really easy because there is a lot of information that's covered in the Network Plus exams to get overwhelmed and feel like there's no way that you're gonna be able to pass. And then honestly, before the exam, I kind of felt like that myself, but during the exam, I just slowed down, read each question all the way through, understood what the right answers were, why they were correct, but then also looked at the wrong answers and understood why they were not correct. Because sometimes with CompTIA, they'll try to trip you up and they might throw something in there 
that looks like a right answer that if you're speeding through it, you'll click that and just think you're good. But don't just click an answer and then move on. Even if you're dead sure that you know it, read the question slowly and make sure that you're not supposed to give which one of these is incorrect rather than which one of these is correct, you know? Uh, so take these things in mind, take them into consideration. Uh, there's a lot of different resources out there, a lot of stuff for free, a lot of stuff for pretty cheap. Uh, personally, for either the A plus exam, the Network Plus exam, or the Security Plus exam, if you go on the Play Store and just look up Network Plus, Security Plus, or A plus, there's an app that you can download that has like a thousand practice questions on it that's put in a really helpful format. I've used that for both the A plus exams that I took and the Network Plus, and I'm using it for Security Plus right now, which I hopefully will be taking later this week and passing that exam soon. So these certifications are really helpful if you're looking for a college university that you don't wanna spend four years at, but also get a lot of good certifications and training along the way. I can't recommend Western Governors University enough. And hopefully I'll make a few more videos sharing this stuff, but you know, I've only been in this university program for about a month and a half, a little over a month and a half at this point, and I'm already 40% finished with the degree. So I really think I'm on pace to do a pretty tough degree in terms of the amount of certifications that you need and the amount of competency units that you need to finish. Uh, I'm on pace to finish it in less than six months. So the goal is six months. I'd like to get that done and then roll that straight into my master's degree from Western Governors University and be able to get some real good experience and share a lot of more uh, in-depth updated content on the channel but I just wanted to share that story about you know having to bust a door down in order to take this exam and just dealing with the issue with the performance based question I hope they get that fixed the next time I take the exam later this week for the security plus uh, I'm not going to take it on the same computer I want to use a bigger monitor just in case that issue happens again uh, I took the exam on a different monitor that I have once that is a lot bigger that I use for photo editing and video editing and stuff but um, I didn't want to use it again because it was so large. It's a 4K monitor and the questions looked a little smaller. I had to look at the screen closer and a couple times they got on me because my head moved out of the frame of the camera well, so they couldn't see it very well. So I changed to using my laptop better because the camera on that's better, but you know, then there was the issue with the screen. So I don't want to risk that happening again. I want to make sure that I'm maximizing my potential. But honestly, if I was able to do the performance questions the way that I think I should have been able to get like at least in the 800s, I believe, because especially it was frustrating for the last performance based question because I could have typed the answer. I didn't even need a drop down selector to answer the, what they were looking for, but I wasn't able to do it. So hopefully Pearson View, CompTIA get something worked out. So that's not an issue for anybody. Uh, hopefully I don't lock myself out of my house again before I have to take a certification exam and have to bust my door down. But either way, you know, if you're planning on taking the Network Plus exam soon or any other CompTIA exam soon, take these things into mind. Think through their troubleshooting methodology. Think through what they're asking you to do. And just think deeply about what the questions are asking and not just understand what the correct answer is, but also the wrong answers and understand why they're wrong. And you'll have a very, very good chance of success. So uh, stay in touch. I'll try to do more on this YouTube channel and include a lot more videos in it. But for now, honestly, I'm focused on college. I'll share updates every once in a while. And hopefully around August, I'll be making a video about how I knocked out the entire cybersecurity degree from Western Governors University in under six months and how you can do the same. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, follow me on LinkedIn for most updates. That's where I'm going to get most of them to you. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Come back for the next video.